One important task of compositing is the removal of green screen or blue screen. Nuke provides a wide variety of keyers for this task. I'm going to go through several of these very briefly just so you have an introduction. I brought in two pieces of footage to try this on. There's a green screen of the man that we used previously. And there's also a still image of a house that just has a bright sky. Now even though there's no green or blue in this particular photo, you can still use keyer tools to attack the sky and remove it. You can reach the keyer tools through the keyer menu. We're going to start with the simplest one, which in fact is called keyer. Now even though it doesn't have a lot of options, it's great for certain circumstances like this. I'm going to drop down the A pipe between the merge and the read node. The keyer has several operations, one of which is luminance key, which is the default. It can also target certain colors like green or certain properties like saturation. We'll leave it at luminance for now. There's also a graph here that represents the operation values. For example, this graph represents luminance as it runs from zero towards one or the maximum. There's also four yellow bars here, A, B, C, and D. You can click, drag those interactively. Now B and C are overlapping at the start, but you can separate them. As soon as I move these, the alpha mat will start to be formed. Let's go take a look at that. I'm going to go to the viewer and press the A key. And there's the alpha channel. What this signifies is that any pixel with luminance value between B and C becomes opaque. Any pixel value that has luminance between C and D or B and A has a tapering value somewhere between opaque and transparent. So in this situation, what I can do is move B and A towards the far left and then adjust C and D to make the sky mostly transparent. For example, what this means is any pixel with a luminance value over 0.9 becomes 100% transparent. Where a pixel has a luminance value between 0.8 and 0.9 has tapering transparency. Let's go back to RGB. Press the A key again. And there we go. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happening right now. What you have to do with the keyer is pre-multiply the alpha. So I can select the keyer node, right mouse button click, and choose merge pre-mult. Pre-mult multiplies the alpha values by the RGB values. Once I add this, the sky is removed. Now to test this further, I can hook up something to the B pipe of the merge. For example, I can right mouse button click and go to image constant. Constant will produce a solid color. I'll hook that up to the B pipe, then go to the color wheel for that node and pick a color like, say, light blue. The sky is gone and now the constant appears in the sky area. Let's move on to some other keyers. I'm going to go back to the green screen footage. Now, in fact, you can have more than one viewer in any project. You can make a new viewer at any time by going to Viewer, Create New Viewer. If you have more than one viewer, you can switch between them by clicking the tabs. So now we're going to work on this green screen. The first keyer we'll try here is Keylight. So keyer, Keylight. The Foundry writes Keylight, and in fact, it's available in other compositing packages like After Effects. The functionality is the same. It looks a little intimidating at the start because of all the inputs, but all you have to do is plug the source into the green screen, and in this case, the A pipe into the output. Now, there are many options you can adjust. I'm going to go over just the basic ones you need to remove the screen screen. First thing to do is to select the screen color. You can click the swatch here, get the eyedropper, and go back to the viewer. There are several ways to sample pixels with the eyedropper. You can control or command click, or control and command drag your mouse. I'll try the drag. So click drag, let go, the screen color is sampled, you'll see it right here in the swatch, and also beside the screen color property. Let's take a look at the alpha. Now Keylight offers this view menu, which you can change from final result to combine matte. This is what the alpha channel looks like. So right now there's some gray in the transparent area. What you can do is raise the clip black to erode that. And what clip black does is it looks at any pixel with a value that's less than the slider, and it makes it 100% transparent. There's also some gray in the white area. You can lower a clip white to make them more opaque. And there the matte looks pretty good. Once the matte looks good, you can return the view to final result. Now to test that, I'll disconnect the constant over here and plug it into the B pipe here. There we go, it looks pretty successful. Let's try another keyer. I'm going to disconnect the key light, disconnect the constant, move that aside, and now we'll try Primat. Primat has been updated for version 7, so it's even more powerful. In this case, I need to hook the FG or foreground to the green screen, and then the output to the A pipe. 
Primate has a very powerful button called Auto Computes. If you click that, it will attempt to identify a screen color and remove it. And in fact, it does a really good job right off the bat. Let's see what the alpha looks like. I'll press the A key again. And there it is. Once again, there's some noise around the edges. Fortunately, Primate offers a long list of operations you can use to clean up the map. For example, I can switch this menu to clean background noise. I'll zoom in, and now I can sample those pixels that are too gray. Another way to sample is to control or command shift and draw a marquee box around the problem area. That samples a whole bunch of pixels at once. So now the edges are looking better, but there's still some gray on his jacket. I can then switch the menu to clean foreground noise and sample those pixels. And now that becomes more opaque. Let's take a look at the RGB again. I'll press the A key. There it is. It looks pretty clean. However, there's a lot of green spill from the green screen in his clothing. In that case, I can go back to operation and switch that to spill sponge, sample those pixels to start to pull the green back out. And there it goes. Now, it's not perfect yet, but you can see how quickly you can remove the green. Let's go ahead and plug in the constant, though, to see what that looks like. All right, let's move on to one more keyer. I'll disconnect this one, move it aside. Now we're going to try the IBK gizmo and IBK color. And those are two nodes that are designed to work together to tackle green screen or blue screen. So IBK color and IBK gizmo. Now the connections here are a little bit more complicated, but basically the one input for the color goes into the green screen, as does the FG or foreground for the gizmo. Then the C or color input pipe for the gizmo goes to the color node. Then the A pipe of the merge goes into the output of the gizmo. Let's take a look at the options. First thing to change is the screen type for the color node. I set the blue by default, but you can change it to green. Now it looks a little funny here in the viewer, but what I can do to see what the color node is doing is plug the viewer into that node. And here it's targeting the color green. Whatever color is not green, it's removing. Now the aggressiveness of the removal is controlled by the size slider. If I increase that, there's more averaging, and there's fewer and fewer non-green colors. Now let's plug the viewer back into the gizmo. That color information is passed from the color node to the gizmo node, and the gizmo node turns it into a mat. Now the first thing you have to do with the gizmo is make sure the screen type is set to the same color, in this case green. Let's plug the constant into the B pipe and put the viewer back into the merge node. There we go. Successful green screen removal. Now I know all these keyers have numerous options which we didn't talk about. This was just to give you a brief introduction and to show you there's a wide range of keyers to tackle pretty much any type of footage.